Now that we're done with the sources, we need to go back to ask questions that will guide our investigations. So basically what we need to do is we need to identify headings that will be related to the investigation. So that will be these three headings that you've identified and included in your task definition earlier. And your questions will need to be grouped under these three headings. So you should be able to ask questions similar to this, but you have to check that your sources actually are able to answer these questions. There's another thing you need to keep in mind, although it does only count one mark, and that is the quality of the questions and that you need a variety of them. So there are four levels of questions and between your 10 questions, they should represent at least three of the levels. So even if you have five question or five level two questions, four level one questions and just one level four question, that's also fine. Just as long as there are three different levels, there's no um, guidelines as to how many of each level there should be. But just keep in mind that only counts one mark. So I wouldn't break my head about it unless you're really aiming for full marks. So if you need some help with looking at that, you can look at the public folder. There's a document called Research Question Levels. And they, that can help you look at level one questions. What's the definition of? When did it occur? How many? What's an example of? Level two questions, which you should have quite a few of. How does something function? What are my examples? What's the relationship between? things like that. Then level three questions, that's a little bit more difficult, uh, prediction questions. If something would happen, what would, if this occurs, what would happen? If this changed, what would then happen? So it's all about prediction. And then level four questions, which is a bit easier, is actually asking whether something is good or bad, whether something is effective or ineffective, etc. Advantages and disadvantages actually also a level four. All right. So what you're going to do now is you're going to look at your sources that you have and you are going to ask some questions. So you need to have 10 questions altogether falling under three headings. So let's do one or two questions together just to give you an idea of what you're going to do. So, as an example, I need to ask a question out of this source. So, we're basically doing reverse engineering over here. So, now that I've, it's very important to obviously know your source quite well and read through everything. So, um, let's say uh, I've read through this and I need to include something about why it's necessary to consider why, where plants are placed. So then I'll ask a question of why is plant placement important? Okay, let's see if I can figure out what level that would be. Um, that might be a level four, but I think it's more level two probably because it's just an interpretation it's not straight fact okay it's, it's looking at context and impact and there's evidence okay so that's going to be a level two the heading under which that would fall it's not difficult because it's not really about this, but I'll say it's everything about this. So the heading will be everything about. Now the source type, I have to say that this is a website or it will be a video or an article or whatever the type of source is that you chose. Okay. And I need to say the source number. So I need to say out of which actual, actual source 
the answer will come. So this is out of source number one. So I'll say comma one. And then I'm going to write my answer here straight away. So um, please remember plagiarism is not allowed at all. So read through this paragraph and rewrite it in your own words and in your own opinion. So you'll have to read through this and write the answer. Please remember when you do write the answer, however, that you have to answer it in such a way that the question isn't necessary to understand the answer. Because in the end of the day, what you're going to do is you're going to use the answer as a paragraph under content without anybody seeing the question anymore. So you'll have to write the answer something like plant placement is important because and then you write your whole sentence about why it is important answering it with the facts from this source okay now let's just quickly have i'm just going to show you one more thing to help you for phase three once you've written your whole answer i need you to please insert a citation to this source so this is a feature that is part of the managed sources that we've now started using. And basically what it does is it just refers to the article from which this answer comes. So you just click on this over here because you now know this is the answer or this is the article from which you got your answer. And you'll see it puts this little field at the end of your paragraph. You're just going to leave that there because right at the end in phase three, you're going to get marks for that and you're going to need that. So after each answer, you put the source from which you actually get your answer. All right, so now you need to complete your question and sources table. You have to ask questions from all three your sources. They have to be from all three headings, these three headings, dangerous side, finding balance, all of those. And for one extra mark, if you want to go to the effort, you have to classify them under the levels. Um, sorry, that's not the levels document. The levels document is this one. This is a little bit more difficult, but if you actually look at the examples, it's not that bad. You have to have three of these four levels. There's no prescription of how many of each. And then say what the type of source is. Remember, they may not all be websites, so at least list one of them as an article from a website. If they have a full date like this, you can actually list them as an article from a website or a magazine article from a website and then write the answer or the summary in your own words from the article and please don't ask questions that you can't find the answer to in your actual article the point is now that we're doing reverse engineering we have the information here we need to just phrase a question so that we can use this information. And the answer needs to be phrased in such a way that in the end of the day, we can use this paragraph without needing to read this question. And then it will still make sense.